Scientists are currently searching for biosignatures, which are signs of past or present life, on other planets and moons in our solar system such as Mars, Europa, Enceladus, and Titan. The dark side of the moon is a colloquial term, often used to refer to the side of the moon that faces away from Earth, and is not visible from Earth. However, it is not actually darker than the side of the moon that faces Earth. The surface of the moon is lit by the sun, and since the moon takes about 29.5 days to orbit Earth and rotate on its own axis, we see all of its surface over time. Scientifically speaking, the far side of the moon is different from the near side in that it has a thicker, older crust and a higher concentration of impact craters. Additionally, the far side has a different distribution of maria, large, dark, basaltic plains, and lacks the large mountainous regions found on the near side. Why the moon always faces one side to the Earth? The moon's rotation is tidally locked to Earth, meaning that it takes about the same amount of time for the moon to rotate once on its axis as it does to orbit Earth. This means that the same side of the moon always faces Earth. This is a result of a process called tidal locking, which occurs when the gravitational pull from a larger body, in this case Earth, causes the rotation of a smaller body, the moon, to slow over time. As the moon's rotation slowed, its gravity caused bulges to form on the side facing Earth, and the side facing away from Earth. The gravitational pull from the Earth on the near side, caused the near side to slow down more than the far side, and eventually, the Moon's rotation slowed to the point that it matched its orbital period around the Earth. This caused the Moon's rotation to become synchronized with its orbit, resulting in the same side facing the Earth. How much Moon has been explored by humans? Humans have explored a relatively small portion of the Moon's surface. The first successful manned landing on the Moon was on July 20, 1969, when NASA's Apollo 11 mission successfully landed astronauts Neil Armstrong and Edwin Buzz Aldrin on the surface. In total, there were six manned missions to the Moon. Apollo 11, 12, 14, 15, 16, and 17 between 1969 and 1972 and a total of 12 astronauts walked on the surface. During these missions, the astronauts explored a total of five landing sites on the near side of the moon. The Sea of Tranquility, Apollo 11, the Ocean of Storms, Apollo 12, the Fraunhofer Crater, Apollo 14, the Hadley Apennine Mountains, Apollo 15, and the Descartes Highlands, Apollo 16 and 17. They collected samples of lunar soil and rocks, conducted experiments, and took photographs of the surface. Since the end of the Apollo program, there have been no manned missions to the moon, but several robotic missions have been sent to explore the surface. NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, LRO, has been mapping the entire surface of the moon since 2009, and China's Chang'e missions have explored the surface since 2013. It's important to note that even though only a small area of the moon has been explored by human and robots, the moon has been mapped extensively, and now scientists and researchers know most of the characteristics of the moon's surface. Why have humans not explored the far side of the moon? Humans have not explored the far side of the moon in person because it is logistically more difficult and expensive to do so. The Apollo missions, the only manned missions to the moon so far, focused on landing on the near side of the moon, which is the side that faces Earth. This was because the near side of the moon is much more accessible and has more favorable landing conditions, such as relatively flat and smooth areas, compared to the far side, which has more rugged and mountainous terrain. Additionally, the communication between the far side of the moon and Earth is difficult due to the lack of line of sight, which means that a direct communication is not possible. A relay satellite or a ground station on the far side of the moon is needed to communicate with Earth. Despite these challenges, several robotic missions have been sent to explore the far side of the moon. In January 2019, China's Chang'e 4 spacecraft successfully landed on the far side of the moon, and it has been conducting scientific experiments and collecting data. Other missions have also been sent to orbit and map the far side of the moon, such as NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, LRO, which has been mapping the entire surface of the moon since 2009. It's worth noting that there are ongoing plans for future manned missions to the far side of the moon, such as NASA's Artemis program, which aims to land astronauts on the moon by 2024, but the focus is mainly on the near side. What are the conspiracies about the far side of the moon? There are several conspiracy theories that have been proposed about the far side of the moon, many of which are not supported by scientific evidence. 
Some of the more popular theories include. The moon landing was a hoax. This theory claims that the Apollo 11 moon landing in 1969 was staged by NASA and never actually occurred. Aliens or UFOs have bases on the far side of the moon. Some believe that extraterrestrial beings have established bases on the far side of the moon, and that these bases have been covered up by NASA and other government agencies. The moon is hollow. Some have suggested that the moon is actually a hollowed-out spacecraft or artificial construct created by an advanced civilization. The far side of the moon is hidden from view. Some have claimed that the far side of the moon is hidden from view by the government and that the images of the far side that have been released are fake. It's important to note that these theories are not supported by scientific evidence, and that the scientific consensus is that the Apollo moon landings did occur, and the moon is a natural satellite of the Earth. Can there be alien life or proofs of existence of alien life hidden on the far side of the moon? There is currently no scientific evidence to suggest that there is alien life on the far side of the moon or anywhere else in the solar system. The conditions on the moon are extremely harsh, with no atmosphere, extreme temperatures, and intense radiation. It is unlikely that any form of life as we know it could survive on the surface of the moon. The search for extraterrestrial life is an active area of scientific research and the possibility of life elsewhere in the universe, including on the moon, has not been ruled out. Scientists are currently searching for biosignatures, which are signs of past or present life, on other planets and moons in our solar system such as Mars, Europa, Enceladus, and Titan. It's important to note that any claims of evidence of alien life on the moon, or anywhere else, should be critically evaluated and supported by scientific evidence before being accepted as true. It is always important to approach such claims with a healthy dose of skepticism and to seek out multiple sources of information before forming an opinion. Can humans survive after creating man-made environments on the moon? It is currently not possible for humans to survive permanently on the moon without significant technological advancements and the development of man-made environments. The moon's surface is extremely harsh, with no atmosphere, extreme temperatures, and intense radiation. There is also a lack of resources such as water and breathable air. To establish a permanent human presence on the moon, it would be necessary to create man-made environments that can sustain human life, such as habitats that can provide protection from the harsh lunar environment and resources like air, water, and food. These environments would need to be able to withstand the extreme temperatures and radiation, as well as provide protection from micrometeoroids and other hazards. Scientists and engineers are currently researching and developing technologies that could enable humans to survive on the moon. For example, NASA's Artemis program, which aims to land astronauts on the moon by 2024, plans to use a combination of in-situ resource utilization ISRU, and life support systems to create a self-sustaining lunar habitat. ISRU is the process of using resources found on the moon to create fuel, oxygen, and building materials. It's important to note that while it is possible to create man-made environments to sustain human life, it would require significant technological advancements and resources. Even with these advancements, it is likely that a permanent human presence on the moon would be limited, and would likely be focused on scientific research and exploration rather than long-term habitation. Can humans buy land or pieces from the moon? Technically, it is not currently possible for individuals or organizations to buy land or pieces of the moon. The Outer Space Treaty of 1967, ratified by 110 countries including the United States, states that celestial bodies, including the moon, are not subject to national appropriation and are available for use by all countries for peaceful purposes. This treaty also prohibits any country from claiming ownership of the moon or any other celestial body. This means that no individual or organization can claim ownership of any part of the moon, and no one can buy or sell it. Any use of the moon and its resources must be for peaceful purposes and for the benefit of all mankind. It is worth noting that some private organizations have made claims to ownership of the moon or its resources, but these claims are not recognized by the international community and are not legally binding. In any case, human activity on the moon is still in its early stages and the possibilities of mining, colonization, and even tourism are still under study and it's still not clear yet how the resources will be managed and by whom, but it's likely that the international laws and agreements will be the framework for that. Are there any minerals or resources on the moon? Can humans explore and collect them? There are several minerals and resources present on the moon, including Helium-3, 
a rare isotope that is thought to be abundant on the moon. It is a potential fuel for nuclear fusion and could be used as a source of energy on Earth. Rare Earth Elements Minerals that are used in a wide range of modern technologies, such as smartphones and electric vehicles. They are thought to be present on the moon in small amounts. Water. Water molecules have been found in the polar regions of the moon, and scientists believe that there may be significant amounts of water ice trapped in the permanently shadowed craters at the moon's poles. Building materials. The moon's surface is composed of a type of rock called basalt, which can be used as a construction material. The exploration and extraction of these resources is an active area of research, and several missions have been sent to the moon to study its resources in more detail. It's worth noting that the extraction of resources from the moon would be a complex and costly endeavor and would likely require significant technological advancements and international cooperation. Additionally, any use of the moon's resources would have to be carried out in compliance with international laws and agreements, such as the Outer Space Treaty, which states that celestial bodies, including the moon, are not subject to national appropriation and are available for use by all countries for peaceful purposes. Don't forget to like and follow, subscribe, and press the bell icon to get informed about future videos.